Hello, Dr. Carlos Pagosian here, President of the Federation of Chiropractic Licensing Boards. The purpose of this video is to give you a synopsis of the work that the Federation has done in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Before I share the update with you, I'd like to convey the mission and the vision of the Federation. See, our goals of the Federation is twofold. Number one, to protect the public. And number two, to elevate our profession in the public's eye. Ultimately, everything that we do is about public health, public safety, and public trust. And we know at the Federation, when we focus our energies and our resources on those goals, the profession moves forward. And more than ever before, that vision has become crystal clear to us. We're so inspired by the presence of greatness in so many people in every facet of our beloved profession. Whether it's those who are involved in regulation, those involved in education, our students, and of course, our practicing doctors serving their communities. At times like this, I'm reminded of what Harry Truman said, that we can accomplish anything in life so long as we don't mind who gets the credit. Our shared passion and purpose, our commitment to serve, and our belief in the justice of our work binds us all together and gives us strength to persevere. And perseverance is one of those cardinal virtues that will help us accomplish anything. On March 17th, we took a timely and immediate stance affirming doctors of chiropractic as essential healthcare providers. Following that statement, we contacted many state officials and governors, including the governor of Kentucky, reasserting the importance of access to chiropractic care, not just for acute and existing patients, but also the role we play in reducing the burden on emergency healthcare facilities. On March 25th, we wrote to Dr. Anthony Fauci, Director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, reiterating the same points. Ironically, three days later, on March 28th, US Department of Homeland Security identified chiropractors as essential healthcare providers. By April 2nd, many states revised their position on chiropractic facilities, ensuring the members of the public could continue receiving the much needed and necessary chiropractic care. Since then, we have reshifted our attention on licensing oversight issues. On April 3rd, our newly established COVID-19 committee issued guidelines to the licensing boards suggesting they expand their acceptance of online continuing education, offer modifications to license renewal deadlines, and offer concessions for licensing renewal fees. I'm happy to report that the many states have adopted some of these guidelines. Our entire website has been turned into an online COVID-19 resource center with multiple updated links readily available to our member boards and our licensees please check out our website at www.fclb.org. These are truly extraordinary times, and we're so proud of the commitment, the courage, and the compassion of so many people, especially those at our headquarters at FCLB, our staff, our board of directors, our committee members, and our members. Finally, I'd like to share a story with you. A team member from a chiropractic office was shopping for disinfectants in a local department store at the end of her evening shift. She had her office uniform on with her name badge and she didn't think much of it until she heard clapping. Soon more clapping. Soon the entire store joined in clapping and applauding her and saying thank you. Thank you for the work that you, your coworkers and the doctors are doing to care for people. I envision acts of kindness like this, small and large, will give us the inspiration and encouragement needed to accomplish anything now and in the future. Together, we will get through this. Thank you for your leadership. God bless.